everyone, it's Lauren Alvin with Add a Pup Dog and Puppy Training. I want to talk about pay scales for your dog. I'll do another video about savings accounts and how those can influence behavior and etc. But this one's just about the deposits that you're putting in. So you got to pay your dog what they're worth. <laughs> um, so infinite amount of money because they're so brilliant. You have to pay them for what the behavior's worth. Um, for what it's worth to them, like if it's really difficult for them to do a particular behavior or they're not crazy about it, um, what the environment is, is influencing their behavior, the distractions they have going around. Dogs do what works for dogs. If they're performing a behavior, whether you like it or not, if they're performing a behavior, it's working somehow. It just makes sense because they're dogs or it makes them feel good or it's worked in the past or it helps them feel safe. Um, they do what works for them. If we want them to do things that work for us and that really don't make any sense for dogs to do, we have to situate the environment and the reinforcers so that it does work for them. Um, so that means paying them for the effort that they put out so that they're likely to do it again in the future. So we have to figure out for our dogs what's you know a shiny new penny versus a $10,000 bonus. Um, and that depends on the dog. Nina's crazy about some things that other dogs are terrified of or hate and vice versa. Um, I have two examples of pay scales. One is Nina's, one is Boogie. <laughs> uh, I'll start with Miss Nina's. So this is dog specific. Your dog's pay scale is gonna look different than Nina's. Um, Nina's is different than Sam's, which is different than mine, which is different than my son's, which is different than a bumblebee. It's, it's dog and animal and individual specific. It's also behavior specific. Um, so if Nina does an easy peasy sit with nothing going on, then I can not pay her or give her a piece of kibble or something, a scratch on the butt, something simple and not very valuable. If she sits when there's 30 people around her going, oh my God, you want to pet the dog and it's really hard, that's a bigger withdrawal. I have to pay her more to keep that savings account going, which I'll explain in another video. So for Nina, down at the bottom, Bottom of pay scale is kibble, maybe about 50, 50 cents each. But that's not to say it's worthless to her. She will work hard for kibble at home. So we'll do 45 minutes straight of shaping. She loves it that much. Or, you know, difficult things where we're doing the chin rest with handling, things that are a little iffy for her. Um, she'll go crazy for kibble at home. If I ask her to sit around a bunch of squirrels outside and pay her with a piece of kibble, she'll probably spit it out. <laughs> and she's not gonna sit again the next time because I took out 50 bucks and put in 50 cents. Next step up is $1. This is food roll, uh, it's semi-moist food roll. If you wanna get it, it's the kind that is not refrigerated in the store. You want the kind that's just sitting out on the shelf. It looks like a giant sausage. Um, but you cut it up, it freezes really well. That's a dollar for Nina. So will you do that in the yard, in the driveway? Um, maybe we're doing some physical fun stuff in the yard that's a little more taxing. Um, she finds it easier to find that outside too because it's smellier, I'm sure. Next step up, five bucks would be cheese. The sharper, the better. She's gotten sick of American cheese. I used to use that for clients a lot. Um, she likes the sharp, sharp cheese. So this is five bucks. We'll use this around town. We'll use this if we take classes. Um, moderate difficulty. There's stuff going on, um, but she's making decisions and I'm putting about five bucks in. Nice five dollar tip every time she does something. Next step up would be meatballs, Italian flavored only. It's just what she likes. Ten bucks. Exciting place, squirrels around, advanced difficulty. I'll use this for recalls that we're practicing. Um, I used it for counter conditioning around squirrels because there was a whole squirrel colony in my neighborhood a couple years ago. Um, this is really valuable for her. Really, really valuable for her is canned chicken. It's smelly, it's cheap, it's easy on the tummy. She loves it. Um, we'll use this at a crowded event. We'll use this somewhere where she might feel a little scared. Um, we'll use this definitely at the vet, things like that. She loves the vet, but you know, it's a little weird. You get needles put in you, it's not the most fun. Um, but we use this when there's lots of dogs or people or potentially scary things around. We pull out the nuclear option. So, that's food. Your dog might like carrots or apples. Nina's crazy about apples. Um, frozen peas, what else do I have on here? Single frozen pea is a piece of kibble. If you have a tiny dog, I did the tiny dog treat video, you can make kibble a little more interesting by infusing it, go check that video out. Um, string cheese, Cheerios, 
I've got a little cup of Cheerios that my son never finished like six months ago in his room, so I pay the dog for getting out when I ask her to. Um, doesn't have to be fancy. I prefer actual food or dog food to do this. Um, things you buy in a pouch, it's just a lot of flavorings and extra stuff that you don't need. If they're eating it, it might as well either be their food or food food. All right, so that's her food stuff. Uh, oh, other high value might be Vienna sausage, hot dogs, liverwurst, wet food, trite. The smellier, the better. Um, these are the pretty good, these are the really good, and that's the nuclear option. So for Nina, her toys, she really doesn't care about Kong, so I couldn't think of anything lower than tennis balls. Tennis balls she likes, she'll drop it when I ask her to in order to have it thrown again. Um, she'll do some sits and downs and stuff like that in order to go chase it, but then she just wants to tear it apart. Her babies, we'll play tug, we'll do drop it while we're playing tug, so it's a little more arousing. Um, she'll do some stuff for that. Her special tug toys, she's got special that she sees pretty regularly and special that she only sees every once in a while. The special tug toys are about 10 bucks, so she'll drop it <laughs> during an exciting game of tug. She'll do recalls, she'll do you know healing and around and roll over and all sorts of chains of behaviors in order to get that. Um, and $100 are puppets. <laughs> she wants to gleefully murder puppets. Um, it makes her very excited. But I can't use it because there's flesh inside. She can sit and wait for a little bit and then it's just like okay take it off my hand she tears it apart so that's Nina's here's boogies he does not care about carrots I tried carrots on Nina she had the same reaction WTF dry crunchy the kibbles one cent for him they're pretty high for Nina maybe I get better food <laughs> um, chicken he's 50 cents that's not that great for him cheese is five dollars and bacon is ten dollars I've never tried bacon with Nina but that's pretty high for him and then he likes his his tennis ball, pretty good, rubber bone, boring, and he's got a <laughs> torn apart froggy that's his favorite. Um, so it looks like Boogie finds toys more valuable than most food. Um, the tennis ball's worth more than the cheese, and the little squeaky balls are almost as much as the bacon. The bacon's as much as the froggy skin. Nina likes food more than most toys, um, but she has other things that she's really crazy about. So, food and toys are great in class. Um, brand new things when you've got it handy then that's what you're gonna use you can use it all the time too I always have treats on me whenever I'm working with a dog because if they do something I get to pay them but it's not the only time they're getting reinforced for things dogs are learning through consequence and association all the time so even if you don't have your treat pouch on you if your dog is keeping their feet on the floor and getting pet they're being reinforced for it or if you don't have your treat punch on you and your dog is jumping all over the guests and the dog guests are screaming and you know it's a grand old time they're being reinforced reinforced anyway um, so real life rewards everything's real life uh, but real life rewards things that are going on when you're not necessarily in trainer mode are also reinforcing your dog and anything that your dog likes anything can be used as a motivator for behavior so if you leverage access to the stuff your dog likes contingent upon behavior that you like then they get what they want and you get what you want and beautiful happy rainbow hands <laughs> everyone gets what they wanted and they're more likely to do the same thing in the future so doggy pay scale Nina's real life rewards are good for generalizing behaviors um, you might teach your dog sitting down fantastically in your house or in the training center or in your yard but then when you're out and about at a cafe or something it's a totally different environment there's smells and people and all sorts of things and then they they didn't know that that also happens there. <laughs> They're not great at generalizing. Um, and impulse control, I'll explain in a second. So for Nina, $20 is getting pet. She loves getting pet. She is keeping her feet on the floor here while several girls are just petting her to her heart's content. So she is being reinforced continuously for having her feet on the floor. If she were to jump up, then she wasn't about to jump up, but I usually coach kids. If the dog jumps up, you be a mummy and you turn away. So jumping up makes the payment go away. As long as you have your feet on the floor, the payment keeps coming. And the payment keeps coming because your feet are on the floor and you get paid for keeping your feet on the floor, which means the payment keeps coming, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so she's just got a nice little reinforcement loop going on there. Super duper tug toys. That's maybe about a hundred bucks. Um, we'll do impulse control with that. When we start getting into the things that she gets really excited about, 
then she can only do so many things around them. So the special tug toys, she'll drop it, she'll do long chains of behavior, things like that. She'll do recalls for it. The flirt pole, it's a very bad picture of it. I have a video on them too. She can spit it out, she can wait. She can be running after it and wait like mid stride. She can sit and she can down and she's just been able to roll over, but it's like a really fast roll over because she's so excited about getting the $10,000 thing. But when she spits it out and she sits and waits and she does whatever else I ask her to do and I go, okay, and have her go get it, I'm putting $8,000 back in that account. So if it was so difficult that it was an $8,000 withdrawal, then I'm at least coming out even. But if I'm asking for things that are just within her capability to do, then I am adding. If I took out 6,000 and putting in 8,000, I just added $2,000 to that savings account. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's what you can do when you start getting into things they're really passionate about, like the hose or swimming. Um, Nina loves water. So if she can sit, very excited sit or lay down or wait for a little bit around the hose, then when I spray her in the face with it, I'm putting $80,000 in whatever account she was doing. Um, so she has an enormous sit account. She has an enormous weight account, things like that. And all I'm doing is spraying her in the face with the hose. <laughs> and a million dollars um, is swimming. So we practice a lot of weight, a lot of recalls, a lot of things like that, um, just going back and forth around water because it's a safety concern. Um, but when I ask her to wait and then I go, okay, and she jumps in a lake, I'm putting a million dollars in that savings account. I'm putting a million dollar pot of gold at the end of that neural pathway that she built on her own by going up to water and deciding by herself to wait and then get released. Um, and that's the purpose of it. I'm asking the dog to make decisions on their own so that they'll make those decisions again in the future because they got the thing that they wanted. So. That's Nina's pay scale. Um, think about your dog's pay scale. What are they crazy about? How can you use that to pay for behavior that you're crazy about? Or at the very least, how can you use it to turn it into a game? Um, it shouldn't, and it doesn't have to be, you know, well, why should I give you this? What did you do for me, dog? It's just, it's how you communicate with a different species. Um, they have things that they're crazy about, and we have things we're crazy about, like, having dog feet on the floor and having dogs leave sidewalk pizza alone. <laughs> um, those are just strange hobbies that humans have. And the dogs just need to figure out, I can do my strange hobbies like rolling in it if I do her strange hobby like coming when she makes this weird noise. Um, and that's really just your relationship with your dog. It's not about a tit for tat. Um, it's about learning and existing together and that's what training's all about. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna make another video about savings accounts so you'll understand you know, a little bit more about the craziness that I'm talking about. Um, and I'll try and get one. I took some footage of Nina having difficulty with the hose, but also having successes with the hose. Um, so when you get up into that high value pay scale, then it can be hard because you're really asking for impulse control in order to get the thing they really want, which is fun. That's getting to know your dog and getting to know how they tick. Um, which is one of the joys of having them. We've got Zany to Zen and Tweenie Boppers coming up August 14th. Um, Zany to Zen is an intermediate class for graduates and beginner good manners. Tweenie Boppers is for dogs six months to a year. Uh, there's no prerequisites for that, so anybody can sign up as long as the dog's six months to a year. Uh, we've got the Loose Leash Walking class starting in September. I think it's September 18th. I don't know. <laughs> it's on the website. Um, Puppy 101s are going on. The next one's going to be this Friday at North Paws, and then we'll have it again second to last Friday and last Friday at Funkstown and North Paws, respectively. Let me know if you have any questions or requests. Let me know what weird things your dogs are passionate about. <laughs> Nina's got the hose and swimming. Um, I know some other dogs have some special little hobbies. Let me know what your dog's is. Take care. Bye-bye.